My friends, we continue to monitor the events on the front lines of Ukraine and Russia as well as in use. And today the active offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces continues. Experts claim that the main events will unfold in the coming months. Do not miss the major news, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to receive notifications for new episodes. So far we see that the Ukrainian armed forces are actively advancing on the Bakhmut direction and achieving success. However, unfortunately all the successes are not shown on the map yet, although we know that the Ukrainian armed forces are actively advancing towards Klishivka and it is most likely that the liberation of this settlement will be officially confirmed soon. The Ukrainian armed forces are also advancing in the area of Kurdyumivka and Ozerinka. In Bakhmut itself, according to reports, the Ukrainian armed forces are also making active progress and streets are already being liberated. However, the general staff is delaying official statements, so we are waiting. In the area of Yahidne and Verkhivka, the Ukrainian armed forces are conducting powerful offensive actions and shelling, so the Russians have no chances of success and the Ukrainian armed forces are already urging them to surrender to save their lives. Attacks are also taking place in the area of Dubovosilevka and in the direction of Paraskevivka. However, there have been no changes in the front line in this area so far. In the Avdiivka direction, the Russians are currently only conducting shelling and seem to be regrouping. They understand that they need to gather strength to hold their defense, but it won't help them in any way. The Ukrainian armed forces are also striking Russian bases and continuously destroying their equipment. Further south in Marinka, the attacks have also ceased and only shelling is reported. In the Vohlidar direction, the Ukrainian armed forces continue its active offensive with attacks directed towards Vadyane. The Ukrainian armed forces are trying to cut off the Russian outposts from Urajaina to Vadyane, but as of now there have been no confirmed changes in the front line. In the Zaporizhia direction, the Ukrainian armed forces managed to break through the Russian defense from the very beginning of the counteroffensive and has currently halted. Experts claim that the Ukrainian armed forces will not directly advance towards Tokmak, but will continue to advance along the two directions from which the movement begin, in order to bypass the city from two sides and force the Russians to retreat. Whether this plan will work will be known soon, but the Russians have strengthened their positions along the entire front line, so rapid progress will be difficult in any case. The Russians themselves report that they have noticed that Ukrainian armed forces gather in large concentrations. Reconnaissance through combat is ending and the Ukrainian armed forces will switch to a full-scale offensive in any case. The Russians have already confirmed that the Ukrainian armed forces have approached the populated area of Robotine and it seems that the Ukrainian armed forces are successful there. In the Kherson direction, the Russians continue shelling along the entire front line and there have been no reports of any new movements so far. Russia shelled the unbreakable point, resulting in the death of two people and two injured. The head of the Joint Forces operation reported that the enemy shelled residential buildings, medical facilities and a service vehicle. However, the Russians claim that they continue to shell the area near Antonivsky Bridge as before, while the Ukrainian armed forces are developing territories in the area of Zalata Balka. If the revealed areas turn out to be sufficiently high, there may be some movement, possibly towards the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. In general, the Russians are attempting to control every meter of the territory and whenever there is any movement from the Ukrainian side, they immediately raise panic. 
In the direction of Dvorichna and Svatova, the Russians have reduced their activity and are only engaging in shelling. The Ukrainian armed forces, on the other hand, have not carried out any active movements yet, although there is a high probability that a large-scale offensive will commence here soon. In the Krimina and Siversk area, the occupiers were once again unable to break through to Bilohorivka. The Ukrainian armed forces repelled all attacks and, as a result, there are currently only shelling without any offensive actions taking place. The Ukrainian armed forces have also ceased their attacks and for now the front line remains unchanged due to the strong fortifications of the occupiers. The Ukrainian armed forces managed to advance only one and a half kilometers before the movement held. However, more and more military aid is being sent to Ukraine. It is reported that the United States is close to approving the delivery of Atakams, operational tactical missile complexes, to Ukraine. We hope that this will happen and finally the Crimean bridge will be in the right hands. According to the latest information, the occupying contingent is gradually leaving the territory of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Among the first to leave were three employees of Rosatom, who were overseeing the actions of the Russians. Ukrainian employees who have signed contracts with Rosatom also received evacuation recommendations and are expected to leave by July 5th. The occupiers advised them to move to the temporarily occupied territory of Crimea. Intelligence reports indicate that the chief of the legal department Matsurova, the chief inspector Statsky and the deputy head of the station for supply Gubarev have already left for the peninsula. The intelligence directorate also emphasizes that the number of military patrols is gradually decreasing within the territory of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and the neighboring city of Energodar. Meanwhile, according to intelligence data, the remaining personnel on the station have been instructed by the occupiers to blame Ukraine in case of any emergency situations. In the occupied city of Berdyansk, the Parisian region, numerous explosions were heard in the morning of June 30th. According to the Ukrainian Defense Forces, the headquarters and fuel and lubricant depot of the occupiers were hit. Collaborator Rogov claims that around 8 am the Ukrainian armed forces struck with storm shadow missiles, but Russia's anti-missile defense system repelled the attack on the outskirts of the city, and the series of explosions heard in Berdyansk were the result of the work of air defense systems. Rogov showed fragments stating that they were from one of the downed missiles. The Soviet president Ginata Snowseda noted that with the transfer of the Wagner Group to Belarus, the risk of having Wagnerites among illegal migrants attempting to enter European Union territory increases. He mentioned this in a podcast interview with Politica, as reported by European Truth, referring to our team. According to the Lithuanian president, the West needs to analyze all the risks associated with the relocation of Evgeny Prigozhin and his Wagner PMC to Belarus and be prepared for them. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye!